Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Aaron Dykes. Today is Tuesday, August 28, 2012. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Big Sis Napolitano tucks the NBA into the Homeland Security bed, but lets biological agents play in the subway late. Then, Alex goes teleprompter free as Steve Quell and Doug Hagman release bombshell information for martial law. The well, the bottom line here is I've got a source from the DHS that said it's going hot. Uh, now I'm being told that you'll go to sleep on a Friday night. Between Friday and instantly between the times that the overnight hot money changes hands, there will be an orchestrated cyber attack on the major banks of the world. And Minneapolis citizens told not to panic as Black Hawk helicopters black out their sky. All that and more coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight we have a black helicopter story, the kind of stuff conspiracy theorists have been lampooned over for years and years, decades even, because civilians are told not to fear the black ops circling over Minneapolis. If you see military helicopters flying low over Minneapolis, don't be alarmed, they're just training in an urban environment, reports WCCO. Of course, they didn't bother to inform anyone in Minneapolis that they were conducting exercises with Black Hawk helicopters until members of the public called outraged to law enforcement and media outlets. At that point, and only at that point, did they decide to spin the story and reassure people that nothing menacing was going on, that these were just friendly training helicopters. And by the way, the location of where it's taking place will remain secret so the public doesn't gather around because that would be unsafe, never mind the implications of the exercise itself in occupied America, the Orwellian deception that it doesn't exist, and yet there it is, and it's harmless, part of the same old script we've seen for a long time. Only months ago, back in May, in Coconut Grove, South, Cal South Florida, rather, uh, there was a similar exercise conducted with military helicopters, explosions. The public was once again not informed, and yet when the media decided to report on it after the exercises had already begun, they spun it by saying, wow, what a cool tourist story that they're doing Black Hawk explosion exercises there in Florida. Now here in the Minneapolis exercises, they've been going on since the 19th. Here we are on August 28th when they're first reported and they'll be going on through early September. But meanwhile, we're not arming the Syrian rebels, of course, and yet we are admittedly arming the Syrian rebels made up of al-Qaeda factions that we literally airlifted there from Libya, which we literally airlifted to Libya to oust Gaddafi, now to help topple Assad. The New York Times scrubbed a passage which revealed the CIA was helping funnel arms to rebel groups. This is all part of Paul Joseph Watson's story on the scrubbing of the CIA's arming of Syrian rebels. In the article entitled, France Says It Would Recognize Provisional Syrian Government, the line was included, American intelligence agents have helped funnel arms to rebel groups. But this was changed only 15 minutes after this version of the story was published, changed from how they were arming and funneling arms to the rebels to American intelligence agents have helped identify the rebel groups that receive arms. Well, obviously, they're well aware of their true identity, again, being an al-Qaeda faction supported by the West to try to destabilize these Middle Eastern regimes. Why? Also, they can create a wider regional war and so they can covertly topple as many little dominoes as possible. Of course, you recall less than a month ago, Obama's secret order authorizing the CIA backing of these rebel factions in Syria was authorized. It was covered in Al Jazeera, of course. And it's been completely admitted in the mainstream media, from the London Guardian to the BBC to the New York Times, you name it, that the West is openly backing the Syrian rebel forces, openly backing the sham that is the Syrian National Council, the transition councils, all aligned with the Bilderberg factions, the United Nations, and the other super, super globalist organizations that don't want any independent nations. Not that Syria is good, it's got a lot of corruption there, but it's not the brand of corruption aligned with the larger cartel. And this brings us to Walid Mulam, 
That is Assad's foreign minister. He's in the news in the London Independent saying, we believe the U.S. is the major player against Syria and the rest are its instruments. You don't have to approve of the Syrian regime. You don't have to approve of Assad. Certainly, he's been vicious to a number of people that are not aligned with him. But at the same time, facts are facts. The West is definitely the most major player and the U.S. leading that herd. Everyone else is just an instrument in that chorus. This is a U.S. Say CIA, Pentagon, Department of Defense script. It's all a bunch of hockey. And so here he is, Mulam, the foreign minister, saying, I don't understand your slogan of fighting international terrorism when you are supporting terrorism in Syria. And those are facts. Al Qaeda is our enemy, but in Syria, they're our ally. Uh, the people of America are free, but when they're occupied by Homeland Security trying to catch terrorists, they're not free. They are the enemy. And that's the way it works. Mulam goes on to say that perhaps 60% of the country's violence comes from abroad. Uh, he names Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and other allies of the U.S., but specifically points out that the U.S. is exercising its influence over all these partners. When the Americans say we are supplying the opposition with sophisticated instruments of telecommunications, isn't this part of a military effort when they supply? Supply the opposition with 25 million and much more from Gulf and Saudi Arabia. Back on the homeland, Big Sis's super agency is now re expanding to the sports domain. Of course, it's been over a year that she said the TSA will expand to, TS to train stations, to bus stations, to shopping malls, to sports centers. You've seen them try to indoctrinate sports goers already with pat downs at the Super Bowl and plans to expand them to different venues all across the nation in the name of safety at sporting events. Well, now she's back hosting events and doing little PR stunts at football games, urging people to look out and see something if you say something, but don't say anything if you see a uh, tyrannical government entity taking over everything that was constitutional and good in this country. But that's just one stop on the public relations campaign for Big Sis's Homeland Security takeover of all of America. Of course, there's the big spectacle of the phony campaign for the Republican National Convention this week in Tampa. And part of that overall police state presence includes, of course, the TSA, where screeners were seen doing bag searches for journalists, attendees, you name it. There also have been seen at the train and bus depots in that area. And you've also got Federal Protective Services, another uh, Stasi group under the Homeland Security umbrella, checking people, telling people they can't record facilities in that area. That's all been caught on tape. We covered it at InfoWars. Dot com. Also, a listener sent us today photos in New Jersey at the train stations where TSA inspectors have likewise shown up. In weeks past, they've shown up and begun to unroll their security detail in Chicago at train stations. You've seen them at bus depots in Houston and other areas across the country. Janet Napolitano told you they were coming. She told you they were going to take over sports centers, shopping malls, everything. All of public life will be regulated by these little minions at TSA and part of the larger control from Homeland and security. With more on this larger police state takeover, Melissa Meldon covers some of the most important aspects going on right now. Thanks, Aaron. This is Melissa Melton reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Now, as InfoWars has extensively reported on, the government has been arming to the teeth, buying up ammo left and right. And earlier this year, the DHS bought 450 million rounds of hollow point bullets. More recently, Paul Joseph Watson reported that the DHS put in an additional order for 750 million more rounds of hollow point ammunition, bringing the total to billions. Now, other government agencies are also buying up ammo. We have agencies such as the Social Security Administration set to purchase 174,000 rounds of hollow point. And as public distrust grew, the Department of Homeland Security decided to classify their ammo purchases, actually going in and blacking out information on their purchasing order with what appears to be a Sharpie marker about what kind of ammunition they're buying and how much. Now, in addition to that, the TSA recently set to purchase 1,400 pounds of explosives for the canine training program.
They put in an invitation to bid on 700 pounds of A5 flake RDX explosives and 700 pounds of high density ammonium nitrate explosives, which are said to be used as training aids by explosive sniffing dogs participating in the National Canine Program. And according to the contract, these explosives were set to be delivered today. Now, this should be pretty concerning considering that just a little over a year ago, headline, stolen police explosives at Sky Harbor worry travelers. Now, you'll recall just over a year ago, police at Sky Harbor International Airport in Phoenix lost live explosives during a training exercise. And these explosives weren't found until days later when a random passerby happened to see a cooler sitting on a street corner. So you put all that together, they're buying thousands of pounds of explosives, they're buying millions of bullets, and then you've got proposed legislation in California where gun vendors are supposed to report anyone who purchases over a thousand rounds within a five-day period. So ironically, you as a private citizen cannot purchase more than a thousand rounds of ammunition. The government, however, can purchase billions of rounds of ammunition and then just classify it and not let you know why. So one thing is certain though, as public distrust for the government grows and they arm to the teeth with less and less transparency, InfoWars will be right here to report that to you as the mainstream media continues to ignore it. Now, switching gears, government think tank the Brookings Institute put out a report yesterday entitled Understanding the Loop, Regulating the Next Generation of Drones. And they go on to discuss how drones have revolutionized warfare and Congress has voted to further expand domestic drone use with the FAA loosening restrictions. But they say today's drones are merely the Model T of drone technology and tomorrow's drones are expected to leap from automation to autonomy. They go on to say today's humans are still very much in the loop. Humans generally decide when to launch a drone, where it should fly and whether it should take action against a suspect. But as drones develop greater autonomy, humans will increasingly be out of the loop. Human operators will not be necessary to decide when a drone, or perhaps a swarm of microscopic drones, takes off where it goes and how it acts. And they go on to explain how these autonomous drones will make their decisions based on a diagram of Boyd's OODA loop. And as you can see here, it's got a lovely pentagram on there for you. OODA stands for Observation, Orientation, Decision, and Action. Now, Boyd's theory of decision-making shows how machine systems like drones operate, make decisions, and interact with the world. And this report goes on to call for policymakers having a better understanding of this OODA loop and what the next generation of autonomous drones will look like and how they will work. However, according to a story in Counterpunch a week ago, drones destroy their own OODA loops. And this is a story by Franklin Spinney. And basically what happens is imperfect feedback distorts the observations point in the cycle, which would be the first point in the OODA loop. And I think a quote out of this Brookings report kind of really sums up the situation when they go on to say, autonomy is no longer solely a feature of humans. Whether it is a desirable quality for machines will be among the most important policy questions of the coming years. And I think as drones fill our skies, whether or not it's a desirable quality for our safety, security, and freedom will actually be the most important question. I'm Melissa Melton reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Back to you, Aaron. I caught another news item today because it took place in my hometown of Angleton, Texas and neighboring Lake Jackson, Texas, all in Brazoria County, where the Brazosport Water Authority shut down a treatment facility because it detected chemicals from the routine herbicide treatment inside the water.